we got history. You got more history than any people. We got politics. We got more politics. Talking about Trump. I'm talking to you about no darn Trump. All these people are sinners. You got sinners around them. All these sinners all going at them. You got to fire all these people in these offices. They sitting here letting the government, admitting that they letting the government shut down. Just because they playing with people's livelihoods. Right? And we all just so desensitized from it. Are you in the military? I think you feel that thing, don't you? You know what I'm saying? But a lot of us just desensitized from because we we so used to just playing these games. Like, oh, yeah, government shut down. We've been hearing about this every couple years for the last, you know what I'm saying, 15 years. Why right? we just can't say if, you ain't, if, it don't, if it don't affect you directly, you're just like, oh, whatever. But you got to think about it. That's, that's my brother. That's his livelihood. These people promise him something. These people out here fighting, putting their life on the line, not because they believe in this country. I bet they're going to tell you. But not because they believe in this country. It's because, you know what, when they got out of school, they didn't have a whole lot of money. Right? They have a whole lot of money. They didn't know what they really wanted to be when they grow up. So now it comes down to, what should I do? Guess what's going to happen? Right at the school, guess what type of program you're going to have? ROTC. Right? As soon as you got out of school and you go you go to this, this college summit, right, to look at the college, guess what's going to be posted up right there inside a little booth? Join the Navy, son. Join the Army. Join the Marines. I mean... I want to go here, but I don't, I, mean, I don't know if I can swing it. Then my grades got to be right here to get that scholarship. The army looking at you like, <laughs> I don't know if you can do it, son. Right? So then you go in, then they indoctrinate you. You just stop me if I'm lying, right? Then they indoctrinate you, right? They don't get you all raw, raw, teach you about, you know what I'm saying, what it means to be, you know what I'm saying, what it means to be an American soldier. Right? Then you get into it. So now when you go, because then everybody around you, anything that you're doing, you got to have a mindset. Right? So if I'm going in and I got the mindset, I'm about to get killed. Or I'm about to fight these people. And I got the mindset, this is all stupid and a scam. How long do you think I'm about to be doing that? So now I'm committed at this point. I already signed paperwork. Am I lying? So I already signed paperwork at this point. Right? I got paperwork. I'm committed. I know there's there, what type of stuff, like, if I just decide, like, mm, no, nah, I don't want to do this no more, what's going to happen to me? Dishonorable discharge. How'd that feel? I mean, if I if I get it, I mean, no big deal. It's just, they just saying it's dishonorable. But if I want to go get a job, mm, who don't care, right? Oh. That got that. That got that. So now what? So now you're looking at it, sign the paperwork, it was cool. Then you're like, mm, I really got to get out here. Right, I might really gotta get. I really gotta wake up. I really gotta do all these. I really gotta do this stuff. So now you gotta have a mindset to go along with it. Right now you gotta kind of you you incline now because you know mm, it's gonna be a hard road if I don't follow through. So now you incline to accept what they tell you. That's right for the country. Right, you start repeating that to yourself long enough. They beating it into your head. You you they they tiring you out. In my line, they tire your butt out. They work you right, and then they drill that into your head. You are defenseless. You accept it. It becomes you. Right? Then you have so many people that go over there. They see something that they can't get out of their head. They see the real. And they have to deal with these opposing thoughts. This is what I was taught in the army. This is what I need to go through. And then this is what I actually see. This is what I actually know. This is what I actually heard my, my sergeant or officer or whoever I report to actually do and say. It contradicts. And these people come home and they go crazy. And guess what? When they get here, guess what they get? Terrible health care. They don't get the paycheck that they're supposed to get. These people going crazy. Right? They at least talk about that on the news. Y'all want to know here hear something real fun? Our people go through it all the time. We in the hood getting shot up. You don't think it's the same thing? And we get nothing for it. It's one thing getting a paycheck or supposedly getting a paycheck. Right? It's another thing. I just live here. I get shot at. Shoot back. Right? We had no care as, as kids. No care if somebody lost their life. I would listen to a brother on, on a, a radio show, Twice Talk, right? I would listen to a brother talk, and he was talking about how he, uh, at 15 years old, he caught a charge. And he was just talking about, he was like, we just don't, we had, we had he, he called it scruples, I think. He was like, I had no scruples for people's lives. At 15 years old, I'm shooting, and we were sitting here and laughing and joke about people dying. That's how it was, though. Because you grow up in that mindset. And it's not, what's the mindset? I want to be, okay. How do we use, I mean, if you came, my dad, 
right? My dad had money. If I walked around, right, in the hood, and I'm like, my dad is rich. How does that look? Is that a good thing or a bad thing in the hood? A bad thing. Am I cool or not in the hood? <laughs> Why? Why is that not cool? My dad being well off. Because it just wasn't, that just wasn't how things go. It's like almost unbelievable. Like, how are you black and you got a well off dad? Like, that didn't even make sense. Guess what that does to your mindset? If I got, a, if I say you got the all these advantages, now I look terrible. I feel terrible. For my mindset to keep going where I am, just like the military, right? For the mindset to work, somebody got to drill into my head that America, America, this is for a greater cause, right? So now in the hood, you got to drill into your head. It's better to be broke. It's better for me to get it from the ground and put it together and make it work. Oh, uh, you had it easy. That's different. That's how we thought, because that's the only way to stay sane. You gonna tell me these kids ain't going through PTSD? That's why they do all these drugs. You think you see all these people around? I mean, a lot of kids just follow and do stuff. But this stuff, the root of this stuff is from poverty, from people going through stuff and, and having to deal with things that nobody should have to deal with. And you have a whole whole society of people you te telling you that it's not happening. Ignoring it. Right? Just like the military, PTSD. Right? We just can't let these people push us around and talk to us and tell us whatever they want to tell us. We have to have our history. We all listen, <clears throat> listen to the brother talk. Listen to the brother talk. And they're talking about, yeah, we just don't have a culture and all this stuff and all that. Alright? I left a comment on that. I was like, no, nah, we got it. Y'all just ain't had nobody to teach it to you yet. We got it. Right? Nyoka, one of the hosts, she was on there. She was talking about, no, we got culture. You know what I'm saying? She started talking about, like, black culture, the music, and the swag, and all that good stuff. And he was like, he was like yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand. He was right. He was like, I understand what you're saying. I'm not trying to say that's not culture. But if you, I, he was like, I travel now. You know what I'm saying? The brother is a remarkable brother. You should watch that interview. It's a remarkable brother. He, 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 he went to jail at 15. I think he got out, you know what I'm saying, like 10 years later. And now he's a real estate investor. Right, and so all it, all he do now is you know what I'm saying he invests and sell homes and flip them and all that stuff. So not a real estate agent, a real estate investor. Like so, he putting the money up, buying it and flipping it. So I mean, a remarkable, smart brother. Just listening to us talk is it's inspirational. You just listen to him talk, and I'm not inspired either. That thing don't it don't let me tell you. It take a whole lot for somebody to impress me. I'll be like, yeah, I ain't listening to this stuff. You know what I'm saying? You get the gap. But the brother just seemed genuine, and and what he said, you could tell he speaks with purpose. You know what I'm saying? And just hearing this story is just like, man, that's an inspirational thing. You know what I'm saying? That's what we need to see. You know what I'm saying? You can tell just from his words. He's talking about we don't have no culture. He's looking for it. He's like, man, I go to China. He said, I travel, man. I go to China. China, and these people have been doing the same thing for thousands of years. That's culture. We got thousands of years worth of records right here. That's culture. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to tell it. He's like, no, nah, I know what you're saying, culture. Like, I get it. I know what you're saying. I'm not trying to say that's not culture. I'm talking about culture thousands of years back let's trace it back we got that how do you people gonna tell us our stuff is religion that's cool call it religion it's history too though it's my culture too though let's talk about that what i had you grab